Hello and welcome to the technological delight that is Hardware Corner. I'm Jacob and today we're going to be taking a look at the 16 series GPUs from Nvidia and asking the question, should the discerning PC gamer buy either the GTX 1660 Ti, the 1660 or the 1650? And you know, hopefully answering said question before you'll get bored and go off in search of more Cat or Taylor Swift videos. Pro tip, there are options with both if you look hard enough. Yes, Nvidia has launched a two-tier approach to its GPU stacks. First you have the upper class RTX 20 series graphics cards for the well-heeled PC gamer with cash to burn, and then you have the GTX 16 series for the rest of us. These are more your classic type of graphics card without the fancy ray tracing and deep learning gubbins of their RTX superiors. Well, sort of. The Turing GPUs at the heart of the RTX cards have specific silicon baked into them which allows for advanced graphics acceleration specifically for the complex computationally intensive algorithms that deal with the hybrid rasterization techniques delivering our first taste of real-time ray tracing in gaming. They also have the tensor core AI chops to deal with the calculations needed for the deep learning super sampling tech which actually allows ray trace games to run at playable frame rates. The GTX based Turing GPUs however have none of that silicon goodness, instead using a cut down version of the latest Nvidia architecture. Gone are the tensor cores and the RT cores, but you do still get Turing's concurrent floating point and integer operations, enabling speedier processing of modern game engines and the architecture's unified cache design. Nvidia has unlocked ray tracing support for all GPUs from the GTX 1060 and up, but without that dedicated hardware, it's a hard sell for the 16 series. But they do bring all of that rasterized ruckus and offer more advanced silicon than the old 10 series cards for a whole lot less than the wallet bruising pricing of the RTX 20 series. But with the full GTX 16 series family now on sale, which is the card the parsimonious PC gamer should be dropping cash money on? The poor GTX 1650. It tried, it really did. But it's the TU117 GPU that delivers performance that even its parents have a hard time loving. It had a bit of an awkward birth, with Nvidia stepping back from sampling and even withholding testing drivers until the day of launch. It was a card Nvidia had to make to round out the stack, but it was an unwelcome third child and almost just immediately dumped at the door of the GPU orphanage. But that's not really the 1650's fault, and it's mostly just the result of what the competition has been doing, and because of the way the market was set up in the first half of 2019. In short, you blame AMD's RX 570. Because the Radeon card is based on an old design, and one which ended up being made in bulk as a result of the GPU mining fad, there is still a whole heap of them left in the channel. And with Navi on the way before the autumn, prices for the RX 570 and the RX 580 and 590 have been tumbling. And tumbling to the extent that this second tier Polaris card is now cheaper than the old GTX 1050 Ti has been retailing for. Unfortunately, that's the card Nvidia is replacing with the 1650 and this later Turing card is not coming in any cheaper. It is faster than the GTX 1050 Ti, but often loses out in performance terms compared with the old RX 570. It's sometimes close, but does explain why Nvidia seemed to want to pretend the launch wasn't really happening. And it also begs the question, who would buy a GTX 1650? Honestly, there actually is one very specific niche of PC people that absolutely should. Those with some creaking old office machine, some black box HP or Dell rig who want to do a little gaming on the side. Like the 1050 Ti, the 1650 requires no external power. There's no PCIe power connector there. It takes all it needs from the motherboard it's connected to. And that means any PC with a PCIe based board, essentially any machine released in the last decade or so, can be instantly upgraded to serious 1080p gaming performance for just $149. As a drop-in gaming upgrade, it's the fastest and easiest GPU to boost the power of your weak heart desktop machine. But for everyone else, the RX 570 is the cheaper and faster card. The GTX 1660 had one mission, to kill Polaris. It launched after the GTX 1660 Ti took over as the best sub $300 GPU, with that card offering GTX 1070 gaming for 1060 money. But like a surgically altered stealth assassin, it was parachuted into the GPU market in the perfect position to take on and take out the RX 590 and 580. Priced and specs specifically at a similar level to the top tier AMD Polaris cards, the GTX 1660 represents the smallest cut Nvidia has ever made to a GPU when making a derivative card. 
It's got 22 SMs instead of 24, which means you're only losing 128 cores, giving it 92% of the GTX 1660 Ti's core count. Nvidia did make the switch from GDDR6 to GDDR5, but at this level it doesn't make a huge difference. With the 6GB GTX 1660 retailing for around the $200 level, it's hard to argue with its pricing or its performance, and that means it's almost impossible to recommend either the RX 580 or RX 590 anymore. The one problem is that it doesn't really raise the bar by much at all. It's there for a single purpose, but is essentially offering the pricing and performance that we pretty much already had with the AMD cards. You know, up to this point, you could just pick one of those up, and now you just pick one of these up instead. It's all the same. Anyone already sitting on a mid-range GPU has no reason to think about upgrading to the GTX 1660 today. Right now, the GTX 1660 Ti is our pick as the best graphics card around. Most of us can't even begin to consider spending $350 to $500 on the lowest tier of RTX 20 series graphics card, and so that leaves the 1660 Ti as pretty much the ceiling for mainstream GPUs which is fine considering you're getting GTX 1070 level gaming performance and unprecedented price level. Well, unprecedented until the 16 series launched anyway. That's because now you might find the occasional lost GTX 1070 turning up in the shops for less than the price of the 1660 Ti. The 1660 Ti has the full fat TU116 GPU, sporting 1536 CUDA cores and 6GB of newfangled GDDR6 memory. It's the fangling that really makes the new video memory worthwhile. It comfortably beats the best of AMD's mid-range Polaris cards, offering 1440 and 1080p gaming performance that requires very little compromise on most games' graphics settings. For us then, if you've got a hard maximum of $300 for your next GPU upgrade, this is the only card worth your cash right now, but that could be about to change. So yes, unless you're upgrading an ancient office PC left over from the Industrial Revolution, which was around 2009 I believe, then the only 16 series graphics card you should really be considering is the GTX 1660 Ti, which could be either of them, they're identical. The 1650 has its very specific niche, and the 1660 is the $200 budget option, but the GTX 1660 Ti offers a tangible upgrade and serious gaming performance for a decent price. But AMD isn't just going to sit on the Polaris GPU architecture forever, and the new Navi graphics silicon is set to arrive very soon. AMD CEO has promised a launch before the end of September, and we're expecting the new cars to drop well before that. And you know how laser focused AMD is on price, which means you can bet your PC on Team Radeon releasing a mid-range Navi that skewers the 16 series GPUs in terms of both price and performance. Does that mean you should wait for Navi to launch then? Honestly, no. If you're after a new graphics card today, then buy a new graphics card today. Such is the way of PC hardware market that you can always hold off on a new purchase waiting for the next shiny thing, and be in tech retail limbo forever. Sure, Navi is almost guaranteed to arrive with a better price performance ratio, as it's got a clearly defined 16 series target to aim at. And if you're happy waiting a couple of months, then go for it but by then we'll probably have heard strange rumblings about some cheering refresh that's potentially just another few months away. But that's it from me, thanks for watching, and if you've appreciated the noises coming from the hole beneath my nose, give us a like, subscribe for more gaming and hardware stuff, and ring that bell. And then go into the comments section and call me an Nvidia shill. Classic bands. See you next time.